Welcome back Heroclix fans. Today's video we're taking a look at DC Heroclix Iconics. In this one we've got the Death of Superman Iconic storyline. We've got what's pretty much a meme at this point, Batman and Robin. And we've got Nightfall, so that's some goodies. For, again from Batman, we've got the Bane in there, we've got Nightwing and some other good stuff. Let's go through and take a look at these. This one here we won't be going through, I will show you again though. Let's go through and do a close up though, that's right. why we've got this camera here. So you can see that there, you get the iconic miniatures and then you get some information and they'll have their cards in there as well. But like I said, this one is gonna be for a giveaway. So if you do wanna win this, go to the other video, go check out my opening. It was incredible, we got a ton of goodies and we've got two massive pulls. So if you wanna go check that out and win this, go to that video, drop your favorite pull and you will be in with a chance. I'll give you guys a week or two just to get your entries in, but in this video, we're gonna take a look at these two. I just wanna say, again, a massive thank you to WizKids for sending me these iconic stuff out, for sending the notorious stuff out. If you do wanna see any of that, go check out that video up here. Huge thank you. I am so excited to be able to support Heroclix here in the UK and hopefully give it a push. So if you've got any questions or you wanna see some how-to, I've got some videos coming up, so make sure you're subscribed. But let's move on and take a look at some of these figures. So we're gonna start with my favorite, which is definitely the Death of Superman. I've not really seen much of these clicks. I don't know the dolls whatsoever. So I'm very excited to get into this one. Let's uh, keep you guys over here so you can see all the goodies. Hopefully not too much glare on this box, but uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Like I say, we will be getting this out anyway, as this one is thankfully staying with us. Right, let's start with the one that was a nightmare to get out. We've got Cyborg Superman. So let's take a look at the card first and a good look at this figure. So as you can see there, half Cyborg, half Superman. Let's see what he does. Three, choose a non-debris token marker that is either within range or held by a character within range and remove that marker from the game. If you do, use regeneration as free. You can see there's a few different dials down here. We've got 185, we've got 75 and 40. 185, I think you might be a little pressed to use that. Let's see what the power is though. So his defense power is impervious. At the beginning of your turn, Cyborg may generate a blocking terrain marker into a square within range. That's pretty good. Um, free blocking is always good. It has also got a trait which says, Shape change. If a friendly character with the Superman team ability has been KO'd this game, you can count and draw a line of fire from the squares of characters that are equipped or have the robot keyword. So a little like Scarab, but he has to do a ton of work to actually get to that point. So nothing much like him at all. Uh, when Cyborg Superman attacks this way, characters take a maximum of two. So they've obviously seen how powerful Scarab was and they've tried to dial it down a maybe too much with this guy. Um, but yeah, super cool looking. Let's put that to the side and let's get into the next one. Um, let's just go in the order they come off here. So we've got Supergirl next. Again, Supergirl, a character we don't get that often, so it's always cool to see. She's got Outwit. When Supergirl uses her, oh, what's it called? Her team ability, what's the team player now? That's what it's called. If a friendly character with the Superman team ability has been KO'd, she may instead choose a copyable or uncopyable team ability. So she could potentially take stuff like Mystics, which is a good step in the right direction. I think Mystics should be copyable. Let's take a look at her first click. We did all already see the click on the other side if you didn't, just down at the bottom here. 75 and 50 points. It's a very, very cool looking character. Free, choose one to use until your next turn. If Supergirl is 75 points, choose two. So you can get Super Strength and Energy Shield which is probably what you're gonna go for most of the time. If she's at 50, maybe TK. Uh, she's also got, when Supergirl is KO, choose a friendly character. This game, the chosen character has flight, Superman, and can use shape change. So that's pretty good. If she's killed off early, then you get some uh, good. Oh, hold on, hold on. I tell a lie, Eradicator's wrapped up in there as well. Eradicator is the one I'm most excited about from this set. All I can remember is the old one in, I think the set was just called Superman um, and he was an absolute monster. I used to love playing that figure. And again, he just looks so cool. He always gets this transparent plastic, just makes him look so much cooler. And he's normally quite a powerhouse. So let's take a look at his card. Sort of jumped out of order already, but I'm really, yeah, massive fan of Eradicator. 
When Eradicate KOs an opposing character, opposing characters modify their attack minus one until your next turn. Uh, penetrating Psychic Blast, he can see through, is that blocking? Yeah, you can see through blocking terrain, but only if a friendly character with the Superman ability has been KO'd this game. So there's a lot of stuff where you want Superman characters to be KO'd. He's got super senses on his special defense. Regeneration is free, but only if he is in your starting area. So not very often you're going to get that off unless he sort of runs back and decides to heal up a bit. We've then got Mullet Superman, as he shall now be known. Wow, he looks pretty... He's looking pretty good though. Mullets are back, so let's have a look at this. The return of Superman, sideline active. When a friendly character that can use the Superman team ability is KO'd, after resolution, Superman is on your sideline. Give him a resurrection token and roll a D6. Adding the number of resurrection tokens to the result. Six plus, generate Superman from your sideline into the last square the friendly character occupied on his 50 point starting line. So when something's KO'd, you've got a chance to bring him in. If he's 90 points, he's got a stop click, he's got impervious. When this power's first real for the rest of the game, he can use flight and can't be healed. Uh, Superman takes a maximum of one damage from opposing attacks. That's, uh, what? Did I read that right? It's protected outwit and pulse wave. Just opposing attacks. Uh, okay, so he's colossal and he can only take one damage. How many clicks does he have? What? Oh, he's only got it for three of the clicks. I was going to say, what's going on here? That is quite powerful anyway. It's going to be very difficult to churn through. He has got Quake, so he could be dealing quite a bit of damage. I am obviously saving the best two for last, so let's take a look at Superboy here. No offense to Superboy. I'm sure this is a good dial. It's a, it's a cocky looking uh, sculpt. Some smoke coming from his finger there. Don't call me Superboy, apologies. Uh, when an opposing character targets Superboy, without wit or perplex, until your next turn he can use Battle Fury and Close Combat Expert. So that's him sort of losing his head. He's also got the Metropolis Kid, he can use Flurry as a trait. When he knockbacks one or more character, if a friendly character, again the same thing if they've been KO'd, choose a character he knocked back and he may immediately place himself in an adjacent square. So that's just sort of him following up and he's got Invincible Energy Shield. So again, a very cool figure, very cheap to use. Let's take a look at Steel though, an absolute powerhouse of a sculpt. Look at that guy. That looks really cool. Uh, so he can be 85 or 50 points. For all characters with this trait, when an equipped opposing character is KO'd, score 10 victory points. For all characters with this trait, when an... Oh, so they've got to be equipped, but you get an extra 10 victory points, which is pretty good. When Steel uses close range, Destroy action, opposing terrain markers can't use indestructible. So that could be quite interesting as well. He can reduce penetrating damage and when Steel succeeds on a D6 roll, if a friendly character again, KO'd, has Superman team ability, he can heal one. So that could be quite interesting. I'm just having a look. Uh, he has got Impervious. Maybe if you give him like shape change super senses, he might be doing that a little more often. When Steel hits after resolutions, hit opposing characters gain a mobile. So he can be quite a nuisance to deal with. But the reason we are all here, these two powerhouses, I love that those cards connect. I didn't realize that until I just picked them up. They are absolute monsters. Uh, let's go Doomsday first. Save the best till last. That sculpt is absolutely incredible. That's so nice. So nice. So let's take a look at the card here. Doomsday says he starts the game with Restraint Token. If he has a Restraint Token, he takes a maximum of one damage from attacks. When an opposing character hits Doomsday with an attack, instead of dealing normal damage, they remove, a, or they can choose to remove a Restraint Token. If they do, however, Doomsday can use Flurry. Just looking at these points down here, even at 175, you do not want to give that guy Flurry. <laughs> but then again, you really need to remove those so he can uh, take a bit more damage. Battle Fury, this is another trait at the beginning of the game, choose a keyword. This game, Doomsday, modifies his attack and damage plus one when attacking one or more opposing characters with the chosen keyword. He's got stop clicks as well, which I didn't realize on his, yeah, okay, that's gonna be three, four. I'm probably not gonna play him at 300, but if you do, he is not going down. He's then got, when Doomsday is given a move action, after resolutions, he may be given a close as free. So let's take a look, so he can move 11, 10, 9 squares, and then punch you for penetrating or exploit weakness, and potentially with flurry as well. So he is going to be an absolute monster. 
But our only hope is the Man of Steel himself, Superman. And there he is there looking. That's one of my favorite Superman sculpts. That was just the plastic popping. <laughs> one of my favorite Superman sculpts. 160 points, he's got 19 printed defense. He's got five damage pretty much with close combat expert. He's got a unique modifier. When Superman is KO'd, each friendly character that shared a keyword with him modifies the defense plus one this game. Protected Pulse Wave. He can run through walls. So you could play him at 35 and then just have him killed off early and get that bonus. And then you can activate all those abilities which worked off someone being KO'd, um, which is probably why he's here. He's got hypersonic plasticity, invincible. When a character attacks, if they could target Superman, they must and can't target other characters. So I really like that top dial. Invincible, protected outwit, so you're going to have to churn through that. It's just going to be an absolute monster. If he is within your eye line, then you're really going to struggle. That's really cool. Like I say, the fact that they've added cards that connect, that tell a story, that is a step in the right direction for me. But that's just one. I just I thought that I was about to wrap up the video, but we've got one more. So let's take a look at that briefly. I say briefly, let's get into it. Let's have a look. I think me and my friends wanted one of these each, so I will be able to just split that between us, which is awesome. Let's take a look at their dials. So we've seen the sculpts. I think we've seen the dials as well, to be fair. That's a really cool looking Bane. We've got some different colors for the different characters. Let's start with Batman here though. So when opposing characters that can't use Batman team ability heal, after resolutions, you may heal Batman one click. This trait can be used while Batman is off the map. When Batman would be KO'd, except by this trait, instead turn him to click eight and place him on this card. At the beginning of your turn, if Batman is on this card and no other friendly characters have the team ability, KO him. Otherwise, if he's not on a KO click, you may place him adjacent to a friendly character with the Batman team ability. So he's super hard to get rid of. Much like Batman himself, I'm sure many villains have tried. And then we've got all of the pogs he can summon there. That Oracle is going to be really nice with Prob. We have got a uh, support on uh, Alfred there, and Alfred's a fan favorite. You can't hate Alfred. He's got Leadership Perplex. When Batman uses Leadership and succeeds, he can bring one of those in, max one. Then we've got Batman's Close Attack deals penetrating damage and can't be evaded. He is an absolute beast. How many points is he? 60 points. That is going to be, yeah, that's going to be really nice. That's going to be really hard to deal with for a lot of characters as well. We've then got Azrael, which has sidestep. Opposing characters with the highest point value on their force can't draw lines of fire to him. If multiple opposing characters are tied, none of them can draw a line of fire. So that's really nice. <laughs> the fact that, let's say they've all their characters are 100 points, they just can't draw a line of fire to him. Absolute nightmare. Uh, obviously, you just have to get up close in that case because you can still target. He's got willpower when Azrael uses it and succeeds. Choose one, damage he deals can't be reduced below one. When he attacks, after resolutions, heal him a click. He's then got some smoke cloud shenanigans. He's got Batman enemy and Batman team ability. So what does he do? At the end of your turn, deal one damage to each. So, okay, so he's using the clouds as poison or flame in this case, which is really nice. And then finally, we've got Bane. Breaking Batman's back in half there. Absolutely, again, iconic, which is why we're seeing it in this set. Bane begins the game on click seven. Three, roll a d6 and heal him equal to that result. If the result was three to six, give him an overdose token. He may heal past starting lines. At the end of your turn, dealing one unavoidable for each overdose token he has. So we've seen stuff like this before with uh, overdose tokens and him being really powerful, but then taking damage himself from the stuff that's powering him up, which yeah, it makes sense. It is the character, it's his story. Uh, he's then got combat reflexes, willpower. When Bane KOs an opposing character or succeeds a willpower, remove an overdose token. So this guy could potentially just heal up straight away and stay there. Oh, my, I didn't, I didn't clock that. 13 attack, 19 defense, four damage. That's that is criminal. <laughs> that is so powerful. Uh, and then he's got outwit. When Bane uses it, he may draw a line of fire and count range from squares of friendly characters that share keywords. So if he's not quite in the fight yet, which he really should be. Or if someone's round a corner or in a different room and you've got someone facing them, you can still get his outwit off. Let's take one last look at the figures there. Absolutely gorgeous. Really fun set. Just in general, the figures, the sculpts, everything we've seen so far 
has really revitalized Heroclix for me. It's just incredible to see. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've seen some stuff you like and maybe you go out and grab them yourself. Let me know what your favorites are in the comments below. If you do want to win anything, go to that other video, leave a comment and I will pick a winner in a couple of weeks now. Thank you so much for watching if you made it to this point and I will catch you in the next one.